All right, gang, here we go into a new computer art and animation tutorial. And what we're going to get into today is creating a surreal scene GIF animation where we have some kind of doorway or opening, like could be a frame or doorway or window or mirror or any kind of frame and something kind of action like a loop playing behind it, as well as some foreground elements where we have a couple more PNG graphics and just some weird objects that might be just kind of moving around in your scene. So a surreal scene animation. So what we're gonna start with is going over some basics of Pixlr. So pixlr.com is a free uh, to use website that does a lot of Photoshop features. And so we'll get into using Pixlr to create this surreal scene and then utilizing Wick Editor to actually do the animation. So part one, here we go. Ready to start a new document here at Pixlr. So we'll go to pixlr.com. Wanna make sure we choose Pixlr E and not Pixlr X. So we'll take Pixlr E, we'll go to create new and use the full HD option here. We'll call this surreal scene. And then we will hit create. So first thing we wanna do here is give yourself a Google image search of some kind of opening. Um, I'm choosing this doorway here. It, again, it could be anything like a, a frame or a window or any other kind of opening that you can come up with. And so I'll just uh, take a quick uh, resize with my arrow tool. I'm just gonna click and drag from the corners and stretch this image so that it just about fills the canvas space. And so that looks like it goes pretty good vertically. And then I'll just crop the edges off a little bit. So this first image you're getting in here is going to be kind of like your background image. Well, actually kind of more like your middle ground image, because we will have an image behind it with the sky or whatever scene, kind of scene you decide to put back here. Um, so now that I've cropped, I just wanted to hit apply to apply my cropping. Now my image is uh, nicely sized. So I'm gonna take my marquee selection tool and I can do a rectangular selection to just select this opening and then delete it so that it will be clear that I can see through in my animation. So I'm just going to hit delete. It's gonna tell me I'm not an image layer because I need to select that image layer in order to delete it. And then I'll just press Command and press D to get rid of my selection area. So you might have to use like a lasso tool or maybe a magic wand tool if for this, uh, if it's not a perfect square um, instead of the marquee tool. So lasso tool or a um, uh, magic wand tool will be useful for that. Um, so next thing I wanna do is bring in my cloud image. So I've already got a Google image search going for clouds. I'm gonna copy this image as well. Go back over to my Pixlr tab and hit Command V to paste it in. Now this layer right now is um, smaller than I need it to be. So I'm just gonna enlarge it to fill this space to cover it. And then I'll move this layer underneath in my layers panel so that the clouds can be seen through the door. And again, this image of clouds doesn't have to be clouds for your scene. This could be uh, space, it could be undersea kind of scene. Um, anything that would be odd to see just out through a doorway or through a window or through a mirror or wherever you've chosen. Um, my next thing here is I have an image that I was going to use just of any random object because in surrealism, the randomer the better. Um, so I decided why not put a giraffe indoors. And so I'm going to copy and then command V to paste this giraffe indoors. And then I'll use my magic wand tool here to click on the white area around the giraffe and delete it. But one thing I do know sometimes is the magic wand tool doesn't always go good on the outline. So I will zoom in here really quick and make sure that the outline was really actually accurate of my magic wand tool. And you can see some areas here on the legs where it wasn't quite accurate. So what I can do is adjust that outline with my lasso tool. So I'm just gonna go to um, lasso and then I want to change this to remove from selection because right now I have too much of this white space leaking into here. So I want to remove this part that it selected where it went into his leg too far. And so there's a couple of spots right there. And then I know that there's yet one on the other side over here. All right, so that looks pretty good for those parts of the legs that I think that the selection didn't go right along the edge there, it kind of went too far. And then I think, yep, there's a couple more spots up here on the ears. So I'm just trying to remove these parts that went too far into my image. So by just using your lasso tool, clicking and dragging 
to kind of select areas inside your shape where your lasso went too far or the magic wand went too far. And now I can just hit delete to get rid of that white space that's around him and press command D to deselect. And now I'll just zoom back out a little bit here and check this out. My scene is coming along. looks like there's one part of the tail that I missed right back here. So I'll take my magic wand tool again, click on that part under the tail, and then I'm set. So last part I was going to bring in is the desert scene that goes in the front. Um, if I wanted this giraffe to face the other way, I could go to edit and to transform and flip him horizontally. Whoops. Yep, flip horizontally so he's facing towards the doorway. Um, so like I said, the last uh, part here was going to be one more foreground image. So I'm going to copy this image. And again, you could do this as any kind of landscape. It doesn't have to be a desert. It could be um, anything else you can think of. It could be a city. But what I'm going to do is paste this in here and then take the cutout tool and I'm going to get rid of the sky so that all I really have is kind of like the cactus and some of the land. All right, so I'm gonna kind of line this up down here a little bit. I'll take my cutout tool here, select this layer, get rid of this pop-up. And what I'm gonna do is use the draw mask feature and I want to have remove from mask selected and make this brush really big. Uh, let's see, I'll select from the presets down here. I think 200 will probably be big enough. Yeah, and so anywhere where I draw, click and drag with my cursor, anywhere I draw and this red appears is going to get removed from the picture. And if you select, if you use a, a background or a, find an image that has um, a pretty even sky with not very much uh, clouds in it, that will be easier because you can probably use your uh, magic wand tool to help get rid of it. Where this process is a little bit more delicate, but still works just fine as I have to be close when I get close to things. So that works pretty good. There's some spaces around the, um, the cactus that I want to go a little bit closer to, but the way this kind of fades along um, the edge here of the mountains actually works just fine, I think. I'm not going to get too uh, picky over that area. So now I'm just gonna turn this brush down to maybe size 30. 40 somewhere in there and try to get into some of this space a little bit tighter along the cactus. And you can always, if you mess up and you need to bring back an area, like let's say I chopped off the top of this cactus here by accident, um, I can switch to add to mask and I can just click and drag and it will draw green back uh, where I'm bringing the mask back so where I want to bring the cactus back in and so just going really into the details here kind of quickly though just for example's sake you of course have all the time you need I on the other hand I'm making a demonstration video so just trying to go kind of quickly here and then that looks pretty good you know I could go along the edges here and make sure that I get these spots and there may be some stray spots too that you need to kind of look back out for. Um, and sometimes you can spot those more easily if you turn off the visibility of the other layers. So just kind of going along here and getting rid of all those spots. So like I said, if I wanna turn the visibility off on these layers, you could just hit this little arrow next to each layer and that allows you to only see certain layers at a time. So all these spots here, I know that these want to go away. I don't want any of these smudges out here. All right, so I think I've just about cleaned it up. And then basically all we wanna do now is save up this file as a series of PNGs, and we can then bring those PNG graphics into Wick Editor and animate them. So that's pretty much it for creating the surreal scene. And in part two, we'll go over saving these as PNGs and bring them into Wick Editor.